when you have uh, piecewise defined functions, So let's say here is a negative 2 and uh, here is 1. And uh, before negative 2, it's a straight line coming from the left. And then we will say that until 1, uh, let's say 1 comma Let's say 1 comma 4. Let's say this is 4. It's a straight line, okay? And then uh, we're going to make it go uh, something like here, here, here is a negative 1 here. That's a, Tote. We're going to make it go like this. So for this given function, what's the graph of f prime of x? Okay. Um, in order to solve this question, we have to know this concept of differentiability. So here's the question. For example, here. At this point, can you think about the tangent line? What is the tangent line at this point? You really can't say because if you cover the left side and you only consider the right side, the tangent line is like that, right? like this. But if you cover the right side and only look at this portion of the graph, the tangent line looks like that, right? Uh, and if you recall, the definition of the derivative was what? f prime at a is limit h going to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h, right? So derivative ha is defined as the limit. Okay. Does limits always exist? Yeah. No. When do they exist? When the left limit and the right limit agrees, right? And it, that's exactly what's happening here. If you only took the derivative of the left side, left portion of the graph, you get some positive value as, the, as this, this slope. If you only use the right portion, you get a negative thing for the right side. <coughs> and of course, positive can never equal to a negative value. So when you determine the limit from the left and right, they do not agree. They independently exist, but they do not agree. Okay. So when you, when you replace the 0 by 0 plus, that's called the right derivative. If you replace the 0 by 0 minus, that's called the uh, left derivative. And we can say if the left derivative and the right derivative do not match, then the derivative doesn't exist. Okay, so that that's the criteria for differentiability. Uh, so to repeat myself, this point at this point the derivative does not exist because the left derivative and the right derivatives do not match. However, rather than giving you this cryptic criteria, there's a better way to just simply see from the graph that the derivative does not uh, does not exist here. And uh, the criteria is, if there's a sharp turn, okay, it's called a cusp. If there's a sharp turn, then the derivative does not exist. Does that make sense? Okay. So here is another example. Okay. There's a sharp turn, right? It, it doesn't vary smoothly. Only when, when the graph is varying smoothly, you can talk about the tangent line at that point. Here, it it goes from slope zero to some positive slope abruptly, right? In that case, you say that the derivative does not exist here. Okay? So that's the first thing that you should think before solving this question. The derivative doesn't exist here, nor here. Okay? 
Right, that causes some, some trouble here. We, we know that at negative 2 and at 1, the derivative doesn't exist. And, and you, in the previous questions, uh, knowing where it hits the zeros helped us a great deal in, in trying to think about the derivative. Here, we don't have that luxury. But instead, what we have to do is we actually have to think about the slope at each point. Okay, so before negative 2, what's the slope? Zero. zero. So before negative 2, the slope will be 0. And I want to put an open circle at two, negative 2 because the value doesn't exist there. Okay. <coughs> slope is 0 because the, it, it's a line. A tangent line to the a line is just the line itself. So, so you just have to think about the slope of this, this graph at that point. Because it's horizontal, the slope is 0. Okay. Now let's think about the slope here, between negative 2 and 1. Right? What is the slope between this point to that point? Well, this point here is negative 2 comma 1. How do you find the slope between two points? Change of y over change of x, right? So it rise over run, right? So if I do change of y over change of x over this interval, let's see, y went from 1 to 4. So terminal minus initial, 4 minus 1. So y, y value increased by 3, right? What happened to the x value? 1 minus negative 2, right? So what is that? That's 3 over 3, which is 1. So we know that between, between negative 2 and 1, the value of the derivative is 1. And I again put open circles between, uh, at the end points because at those points, the derivative shouldn't have any value. Okay, now let's see. After after one, what's happening? I start some, from some some positive no negative slope, right? And what's happening to the slope? It's getting closer and closer to what? Zero. Zero. Right? No, no. The value is getting close to negative one, but what's happening to the slope? Slope is getting more more like a horizontal line, right? So the slope is getting close to, to, to zero. So don't be fooled by this value negative one. That has nothing to do with the slope. The slope is getting close to zero. Okay? So it, it starts from some high value. I, it, you just have to come up with your best estimate. Any value that's reasonable should be given full credit. I think that's like more slanted than, than a 45 degree angle, right? So. The value should be uh, some, some uh, big negative value. Uh, so I'll just say negative, so who knows. But if you said uh, negative 1.5 or negative 3, negative 4, even something down here, I'll give full credit, OK? And then that starting from here, it gets closer and closer to 0. And this is a horizontal asymptote. So that, that's the answer. This is the graph of f prime x. Yes. Can you explain the middle part why that one is straight? I understand why it makes Right, right. So, so here, is the slope changing? Oh, no. The slope is not changing at all. It's always this one, right? That's why it's a constant value function. It's always one.